What's up everybody, Derek Ting here. All right, so this is a discussion on the Canon EOS R and the Sony a7S III line. I've had a chance to try the R line, I own the R line, and I've um, also had, um, you know, uh, some time with the S3. So, and I've worked with the, and the Sony a7 III and the Sony a7S II. Um, I work with the Canon 5D Mark II. I worked with a whole bunch of cameras. So um, this is going to be a discussion, but this is really just to talk to you about making that decision between Canon and Sony. And I think this will primarily go with people who are in that beginner to intermediate range, people who um, you know uh, know something about cameras but aren't the super experts. Because I think if you're an expert, honestly you're probably gonna have your mind made up and you're just hoping that um, the camera meets your expectations. So, it, you know, if you're that person, this video is not necessarily for you, but I'm happy to, for you to listen in and just, you know, listen to my opinion. But of course, this is just an opinion of a person who uh, tries things out, um, is learning, and also, um, I'm not a DP. I'm not the DP, but um, often when I'm working, I will. Um, play a big part in the framing, the choosing of lenses, um, you know, uh, the lighting, because I, I direct mainly, but, um, you know, I'm not hands-off. I'm very, very hands-on. So I make it a point to know the technology, too, because uh, with technology, you can pull off some awesome, awesome stuff, and as it changes, then, you know, more options become available. All right, so let's get into it. Um, but before we do... I would really appreciate it if you like and subscribe uh, to my channel. I'm, you know, adding to my, um, you know, my tech reviews, my uh, information on called upgrade, and also behind the scenes stuff. Plenty of stuff from my work as well. Um, all right, so let's go. So let's talk about the people who want to be uh, photographers, use the cameras for photography. So I think this is a very short discussion. It's a no-brainer. For me, you would go for uh, the Canon EOS R line. Um, obviously, the S3 is you know going to be good with uh, good with photos, but um, you know it's not going to live up to what the the Canon line can do and with all the lenses. So um, you know, of course, you can again argue with me on this, all you experts out there. But if you want to be a photographer uh, and you're only choosing to be these two between these two brands, remember there's other brands out there like Nikon. Um, and Fuji and stuff like that and Leica which I've tried as well you can check out that video um, you know but if you're choosing between these two brands because you know that's you know that's what's getting the buzz you're going to go with Canon because the the lens system is great uh, there's a lot of options and it's 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 very user friendly it's very easy to use out of the box so um, However, though, I will mention, though, if you are a person that likes to tweak, likes to try different brand lenses, um, the Sony will give the Canon uh, a good run for its money, uh, especially when you're calculating costs. So um, that's my opinion on the photography, and I hope that uh, helps you. And of course, in the comments below, if you have a question about this further, then uh, definitely ask me and um, I try to respond to my comments. Okay, so let's talk about the, the hybrid user, okay? The guy that's, um, you know, hey, he's pretty good at video. Oh, he's great, pretty good at photo, and I might hire him for my wedding to do both, mainly videography maybe, but some photography. Who knows, um, you know, what you know, clients are normally asking for. It always changes. But yeah, the need for that hybrid guy, the guy that can do both, uh, is out there. So in this case, this is where the line gets a little bit more blurry because, as I mentioned, the Canon is, is really great with um, the photography and the Sony is good too, but just not as good. Um, I would say that uh, it depends on what type of work you're doing. So if you're doing a lot of commercial work and you want stuff to blend with other cameras, uh, generally, I think the Sony does a really good job of working, let's say, the RED, and you need a nice B camera, and it can function as your A camera if the budget is lower. Um, and so, um, for video, that's great. And then sometimes you need to do um, some on-set stuff, uh, photos. Maybe it's just behind-the-scenes stuff, or it's you know product shots, where um, you know it's not a glamour shot, it's not a um, you know a, a, a picture for Vogue or something like that, or a billboard. Um, you know, you just need to get a good-looking picture 
Um, that's where the Sony kind of shines. However, I still think uh, in terms of overall video quality and picture out of the box, I think the Canon still wins. Um, but, you know, that could be offset by um, the way you use the camera. So, um, frustratingly enough, if you're just using the R and not the R5, um, remember that you have a crop. Remember that you're not getting autofocus in the 4K mode. Uh, those are limitations on that camera. Um, so, uh, while you're getting better picture quality, you know, um, Canon has already been known to limit the capabilities of things, even, um, you know, even on the 8K that Canon EOS R5 is talking about. Uh, people have complained about overheating. So, um, but hey, you don't have 8K on the Sony, nor do you need it for most projects. So, think about that. All right, so let's, um, so let's now talk about um, the pure video person. So, I think that if you are um, a person who, um, you know, doesn't want to play too much around with the settings um, and wants the best picture quality out of the box. I, I highlight out of the box. Then I think um, the Canon does a much better job than the Sony. So, um, you know, if you're looking for that and then, you know, if you want to go to the highest levels, it's got the, it does have 8K. And, um, you know, it does function well in the slow motion 120 um, frames per second in 4K. And it has full frame. So, you know, as you're moving up the chain or you're owning the R5 right off the bat, um, you know, if you're just interested in, um, I think, picture and video quality, the Canon wins. Um, but, of course, the Sony is very close to that. And then, um, you know, the way it lines up the ports and... Uh, you know, the way you can add a, um, you can e easily add XLR ports to the hot shoe in, this, in the Sony uh, A7S III that's out. And even the A7S II is great too. Um, you know, it, those things kind of weigh out um, the picture quality, um, I would say, but it's, you know, still edged out by the Canon in, in certain ways. Now, and as I mentioned though, um, the, way that the Sony mixes with other cameras, um, you know, there's something in the way they process um, the video between the two cameras that the Sony feels to blend more with, let's say, a red camera or um, a black magic. I think it's mainly because, um, yeah, the Canon is, has its own distinctive looks, so is optimized for its own lenses. Overall, there's something that I discovered that, or at least that I think, is really, really interesting. It's the same way as I look at, um, you know, um, building a computer. Uh, it, you know, what they market to you in computers is always the, um, the, the processor speed, the, the CPU. But, you know, as people who are more technical know, adding more RAM, uh, adding more um, RAM to your video card, the quality of your video card, um, the SSD drives, the NVMe stuff, all those things, all those components combined actually make a huge difference. And even if your you know, CPU were the fastest, you know, it doesn't matter if your hard drive is uh, you know, running at 5,400 RPMs. Okay, I'm getting way too technical. So Canon has a really good way of um, bringing all its components together and they work really well together. So the lenses work very well with um, the body. So, um, you know, and they're even optimizing that. I, I have the 7200 uh, R, R um, lens and that is great. I mean, they've shortened the, the, um, the size of it. I mean, it has to extend out, but it be, it's, and it's lighter. So um, Canon has done a really great job in optimizing the lens with um, the body um, versus Sony, I think the G Masters are quite solid, but it's actually, and a lot of people will tell you this, it's actually the Sigmas that are doing a really, really good job on the Sony. And they have also done well on the Canon with those EF mounts. Um, so um, overall, 
you know, at this point in time, if you're choosing between the two brands, um, let's not forget about what you own already because that's frustrating because I've definitely lost the money switching to and switching back. In terms of owning components, I have, you know, gone with the, the Canon line um, because our business does a lot of photography as well. So um, that's the tree that I've gone up with and it's a good tree to climb. However, though, um, you know, you might own a lot of Sony lenses, a lot of E-mount lenses. And so, um, you know, while I think that you'll be lusting after the Canon uh, for certain things, like the Sony is going to do an awesome job. And I think because, um, you know, Sony has come in like a storm with its camera line and it really knows also how to market itself and and also treat its uh, customers and um, the, the fans really well. Um, you know, in the long run, uh, if, if, you know, Canon continues the way it does versus Sony, it's hard to say, you know, I would say that Sony might even surpass um, Canon someday. I wouldn't say now, but man, they're getting really close. Um, and that's, it's, it's kind of almost, I always equate the two brands to Sony, like, um, Sony is like Microsoft and, uh, Canon is like Apple. Um, and that's the best analogy. So probably if you're thinking about getting this camera, you know, if you're an Apple person, you probably should buy a Canon. And if you're a Microsoft person, if you're, if you're using Windows, you should probably buy a Sony. Um, that's the simplest way to uh, sum it up. But um, of course, the decision is yours. Um, so, uh, you know, I also want to mention, you know, I, um, so let's mark this video that I'm about to hit a thousand subscribers. I want to thank everybody who has uh, supported me um, all the way up to the thousand. It's been a journey. Uh, getting here and then I hope that you know, I'll continue to uh, reach out to people that really appreciate my opinion um, It's uh, you know, I I uh, just try to give you the honest approach to um, You know what I'm doing and I do it through trial and error and also studying a lot like what um, you know How others how others work and try to incorporate that of what works for me um, but it's an exciting time because uh, there's so much to choose from. So until next time, uh, I'll talk to you later. Thanks.